Motherboard choice for your system is definitely important, especially if you're building a workstation. Some boards have features that are often overlooked, but may also be make or break for your workflow. And if your workstation is what's making you money, then this choice could be critical. One thing that AMD have done well over the last two years is bring workstation class performance down to the consumer level, both in terms of pricing and accessibility with their Threadripper CPUs and X399 chipset. But with power draw approaching a few hundred watts, 64 PCIe lanes and quad channel memory support up to 128 gigabytes. Leveraging all of those features and cores is a ton of stress on your motherboard and that's not even mentioning overclocking. So today we're going to put two of the top X399 boards head to head in a bit of a battle and we're going to compare CPU and memory overclocking and of course VRM temperatures under full load. Now the two boards that I've got here are the ASUS X399 Zenith Extreme which was released last generation and uh, also the MSI Meg X399 Creation which was built in full preparation for AMD's 2990WX. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the 32 core part with me, but I do have the 16 core 2950X and overclocked, that should be enough to show the difference between these two boards. Now, pricing for these two flagship boards, as you would expect, is not cheap, with the ASUS X399 Zenith Extreme currently sitting at around $450 US, with the MSI X399 Creation at $500. The price difference between them, in my opinion, is negligible in the context of a workstation and the thousands of dollars of hardware that these boards are expecting you to pair them with. Before we talk about overclocking and VRM temperatures under load, let's take a quick tour of what we're working with in terms of features and address the main differences. Now, although aesthetics and design may not be high on your list of what you'd like to see out of a solid workstation board, I can definitely appreciate hardware that not only is powerful, but looks the part too, and both of these boards do that quite well. The Zenith Extreme is a bit more understated overall and has more of a machine-inspired aesthetic, whereas the MSI X399 creation includes shattered glass-like graphics. Both feature RGB illumination on the back of the board towards the right, on the IO shroud, and also over the PCH and M.2 heatsink. The MSI creation board also has red LEDs on each active dim slot and on the IO, which I'm personally not a fan of. For M.2 storage, we've got three slots on board the X399 Creation, which you'll find underneath the heatsink, and you can add in four more with their PCI Express M.2 Expansion slot, which comes bundled in the box, which also features an ITX Aero cooler, definitely pretty neat. The Zenith Extreme has one M.2 slot on board next to the PCH, and you can add in two more with their DIMM module, which also features active cooling via a small fan. SATA storage is slightly better on the MSI board too, eight SATA ports versus the six on the ASUS, and it's definitely evident that MSI are targeting content creators who require a ton, and I mean a ton of fast local storage. The Zenith Extreme does offer faster networking though, as it comes bundled with a 10 gigabit networking card, and that's in addition to the single gigabit LAN port on the rear IO versus the MSI's two. The Zenith Extreme also has two U.2 connectors, but this shares bandwidth with the bottom PCI Express slot. Both feature onboard power and reset buttons at the top right for the Zenith Extreme and bottom right for the creation. Postcode displays are a bit different. Typical LCD display for the MSI board and programmable OLED display for the ASUS on top of the IO shroud. Now this can display cool GIFs and animations and also postcodes, but more useful hardware temperature or frequency. Four-way SLI and Crossfire are good to go for the Zenith Extreme, but we are limited to a three-way configuration for the MSI board due to the layout and spacing of the second and third slot, which don't allow two PCI expansion slots between them. So for those running four two-slot cards, this is definitely something to consider as it's simply not possible on the MSI board, but unless you're building a GPU rendering station, this might not be relevant. Aside from the dual LAN ports on the MSI Creation board, the rear I.O. is identical here since they're both operating on the same chipset. Eight USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, two 3.1 Gen 2 ports with one being Type-C, HD audio using the ALC 1220 codec and a clear CMOS and BIOS flashback. Okay, now onto the good stuff and let's talk about the differences in VRM design. Now, since these boards are both north of 400 US dollars, you can expect some pretty good hardware under those heat sinks, but one is much more capable than the other. Both boards use an eight phase controller for the V-Core VRM. On the Zenith Extreme, we get a true eight PWM phases here, but on the MSI X399 Creation, those PWM phases are doubled by an IR3599, which is splitting the PWM signal 180 degrees out of phase, producing 16 phases for the V-Core VRM. 
Because there are so many phases, the memory slots actually needed to be placed lower than usual, which is why we don't have the full PCI Express slot spacing like we have with the Zenith Extreme. For the MOSFETs, the Zenith Extreme is running 60 amp integrated power stages, whereas the Creation is running packages capable of 70 amps. So far, this is the most insane VRM I've seen on a motherboard yet, and by a long shot as well. This thing truly is built for the 32 core 2990WX and could probably handle that on liquid nitrogen as well. So how do these two compare when using the 16 core 2950X? Well, with the CPU clock speed and voltage set to auto, the 2950X was boosting to 3.8 GHz in a blender run on both CPUs. However, at 1.2 volts for the Zenith Extreme and a slightly lower 1.15 for the MSI Creation. Overclocking was a bit of a mixed bag though. The memory kit that I was using, a 32GB G-School kit of Flarex memory rated at 3200MHz, was able to be pushed to 3600MHz at 1.5V, but not at the same CPU overclock on both boards. Unexpectedly, it was the Zenith Extreme that was able to be stable at a higher CPU overclock than the MSI board, 4.1 GHz versus 3.95. With the memory clock to 3200 MHz though, the MSI creation was now able to push slightly higher, 4.2 GHz versus 4.15 on the Zenith Extreme. The overclocking experience was superior on the ASUS board as well, with the MSI creation having no offset or adaptive control for the CPU clock speed or vCore, instead we're left with either auto or a static value. This was kind of unexpected given the price of this board. At 500 US dollars you do expect at least some sort of dynamic control for the CPU clock speed and voltage. The ASUS board was missing the usual adaptive uh, control that we see with ROG boards usually but at least that had offset which achieves the same thing which is again a dynamic control for the CPU clock speed and voltage. The X399 creation was superior when looking at vCore VRM temperatures though, a few degrees cooler with the 2950X at stock and over 10 degrees better when overclocked to 4.1 GHz at 1.35 volts. Having said that, the Zenith Extreme was still handling things well but keep in mind that the test bench setup has the radiator fans pushing air directly at the heatsink which provided ample airflow. At this point, the tiny VRM fan that was included in their cooling kit had nothing more to add. Not only did it provide little to no additional airflow, but it's also pointed at a flat surface. There is another fan underneath the IO shield though, which does at least point directly at the fin stack. And so despite the ASUS board having half the VRM phases to distribute power and heat compared to the MSI board, it still coped pretty well when handling the 16 core 2950X. If you are planning on getting the 24 core 2970 WX or the 32 core 2990 WX, MSI's X399 creation is going to be the smarter choice for only $50 more. And so I really hope we see that offset control come for the V core and the clock speed because it's been around two months now since this board has been released and it's still not there. It is a bit worrying to say the least, but hopefully MSI see this video and kick their butt into action. For a $500 board, it's just not acceptable. So guys, let me know what you think of these two boards. Perhaps if you own any of them, let me know your experience down below. Links are in the description if you perhaps want to check them out. A huge thanks for watching guys and I will see you all in the next one.